What is up, guys? Here's your boy, Phil Shock of the 19 Chad Dog here with our Week 6 matchup going against Teddy Plays and his team. I guess I'm not going to use team names because they don't really do lo logos and everything like that, but we're just going to go with the team name, just the, the person or the. We're going against Teddy here, and if you guys didn't check out the team builder, definitely go check out that team builder if you haven't already. And if you haven't already, I recently had also just uploaded, breaking the fourth wall, uploaded our team transactions. Let me know which of your team transactions you think was the best. Change. We're actually using two of them. If you didn't check the team builder, you can surf fetch. And Flareon. So, looking at Teddy's team, he literally brought everything we expected him to bring. But no G-Max Alchemy, which actually was really huge for us. Because G-Max Alchemy could have just checked so much of our team if we were not careful. If we seriously were not careful. And that's a good guard. Um, but other than that, I knew Mr. Mind could have became an uh, issue for the team if it was going to come down to it. But didn't come down to it, which is really good. But... That's his regard, but again, everything we expected him to bring, and that's such and such everything like that. So, with all being said, let's go right ahead and get into this matchup. Yeah, before that, though, can you hit that like button and subscribe to join the Full Shocker crew today because you'd be killing what? Killing? Not killing! No! <laughs> you'd be thrilling with the king of frill, the king of the crew. Okay, I'm just, let's just keep going. But I, okay, looking at this matchup, I feel like there was no other better league than my Heliolisk. And okay, I'm making sure some things are off, though. Alright, so I leave with my Heliolisk here. He's going to leave with his Rotom. Actually, no, I leave with my Surf Edge, actually. As he goes into this thing, he could have projected a Volt Switch right there, but he didn't. I go in there, I'm going to click Hyper Voice. And that, ladies and gentlemen, that's Spadef. That's Fizdef Ferroform. But I had a chance to live the Focus Blast as he only goes for his Rocks right here. And right here, I can just freely click Hyper Voice versus his entire team. And right here, I do that and got rid of one of the things that was stopping Grim Snarl. Potentially. But he's done good to do. Uh, he's not even going to click Boomers. I actually live and I will kill myself, actually. He's going to be revealed to be Throat Spray. If I had carried Dragon Pulse right there, because I want to actually make a note right here real quick. I was just going to use that. I originally had Dragon Pulse on this set. But I took it off at the last second, or even didn't think about putting it on there, because I wanted Focus Blast. First off, I will say Focus Blast was definitely the right thing to have on there, and I think definitely the thing he had for Hyper Voice was the right right of call there as well. Just because it was better because it would hit everything on his team in case he wanted to go Mudzeal on a switch in. And then I could go just beat it with Surf. But he goes for the Dragon Pulse here. He does not actually hear the Draco Meter, which is very smart on his part. I carry him. And down goes Noivern. And here's where I wish I was a little different. I wish here I was Lumberry Surf Edge. Or a bit of a like a fizz bulky surf etched or something, or at least like choice scarf surf etched in some way. And he's gonna go here. I'm gonna go for the flamethrower, and I do nab a burn, which that took about an extra 12% of damage, which I don't think mattered. But he's gonna go here, go for the shadow ball, which was very prediction right here. Like here, I'm wondering what the whole purpose was. I'm wondering what the purpose was to, of having Shadow Ball there. Because that doesn't really check anything on my team. Unless he was prepping for Orb Beetle. In that sense of regard. And he looked like he was definitely roughly Max HP, Max Bedevi Violite with this thing. But uh, Galarian Mastermind is now gone. I get my Tox Boost. And right here, I'm basically going to sack off my Zac here. And I'm just going to go for that. I should have probably gone for the Flare Blitz. But on the chance I could have gotten a burn. But Facade was just more better. Right here, I'm going to Gladiator, and I'm actually going to set up my Swords Dance here. He's actually going to click Rest, predicting me to go for the move right here. I'm going to click Swords Dance again, and I should have, should have calc this beforehand if he was maxed out. Because now he lives, he goes for Sleep Talk, and actually got Body, he got Earthquake. Oh, okay, actually, I got Earthquake. I guess it was Body Press, he would have killed me. But right here, I'm going to click Leaf Leaf again. I guess I should have clicked Swords Dance again, because then I could have just clicked Leaf Blade, one shot at him. Probably maybe still have taken the damage, but now he actually comes into this. And first off, Aaron, take that. Surf Edge, put in the work, picked up a kill. But now came a problem with this thing. It's physical Lucario, which is really bad. Because I had prepped in the mindset that special Lucario, which in my honest opinion still was better versus my team. I have two mods that are weak to priority vacuum wave. So and plus, with having that, it would have been better for my team. The only reason I think he ran physical this matchup is because of Focus Blast. Or he would have had to heavily, heavily rely on the fact that he would have to have something like Dark Pulse or something with Vacuum Wave in order to kill everything on my team. 
But I'm going to set up my sub here. And I'm actually going to click bulk up right here. And here's where I wish I was fizz def. Because now, I mean, my speed def's good right here. I could have clicked body press right there, which I probably should have. But now with the two turns of chip damage, I can now set up and then pick up a kill here. So right here, because I'm going to win a Grim Snarl. And this is going to come down to something right here. It comes down to whether he goes for a Thunderbolt, Volt Switch, or whatever. And then goes from there. And if he goes for there, I lose this game. And if he doesn't, I win the game. I win the game. Or I thought I did. If he had missed that, it guaranteed won this game. But in my mindset, here's the thing that comes to my mind now. We pick up the kill right there. My HP increased. 66%. Which means it's like a plus one defense. Essentially. It comes down to a, pretty much in my mind a damage roll here. On whether or not this earthquake will kill me. Or not earthquake. Meteor Mash will kill, or if it lands. If it lands, it comes down to a damage roll. If he misses, I win. I pretty much just win. He goes for the Meteor Mash. He lands it. And we get the damage roll in our favor, and we will pick up the 1-0 victory over Teddy. And we move on to be 3-3. Three and three. We... Did not start off really great in this season. We were 1-3, and, and then last week we picked up our Week 5 win, which now put us at 2-3. And, and now with this, we'll put us at 3-3. Three three. Um, Differential-wise, I don't think it puts us any better, but I don't care. I think it's based on record I think we're doing for this league, which it better be or else I'm going to be really ticked off. But freaking Grimmsnarl, man. I have fallen in love with Grimmsnarl. Grimstall has severely, even though, yes, it's its G-Max form, this Pokemon has seriously been putting the work on this team. This thing, within six weeks, has gotten nine kills. It doesn't lead, I believe it's almost in the top of the ranking board in leaderboard of kills. It's in the top three right now. And you can see why. And again, that weakness policy was, does it need it? Not anymore, it wasn't. <laughs> But was it good to have it? Yes, it was good to have it. I'm really proud of how the team came together and how it ended up. Uh, I definitely think we played really smart. Not the greatest, but smart. I, again, wish, because actually, because if you guys didn't check out the team builder, which I haven't uploaded yet, which I will probably maybe by the end of tonight or something like that, I actually had to get rid of Flame Charge because we were actually doing a site where it does pre-home, which... But it was pre-home, so that means we could still, because we were originally doing this thing where you can uh, do pre-home, and actually allows defog and hidden abilities, but we have the same restriction rule to make sure we may, didn't have that. So, if, or that was another thing I was thinking about, but, or what am I even talking about? Oh yeah, with pre-home, Flame Charge no longer exists on the Flare Round, so... Flareon was not allowed to have Flame Charge, and I probably should have checked to make sure I could have had Flame Charge, actually, before I did that. But, that kind of messed up my Flareon set there, because, well, then again, if I didn't click Flare Blitz, I probably was going to die regardless on the next... Oh, actually, if I click Flare Blitz, I maybe have one turn of Toxic, one turn of Toxic, and then I chip something and I die to Toxic, or I die to something. I don't know, but... In the end, we won the game. GG's to Teddy. He played fairly good. We definitely played really smart with our mons. He was putting in the work, picking up that really big KO on Fairform. And then freaking Gudra coming in, chipping down that Mr. Mime, beating the Noivern. Surfetch picking up the kill against the Mudsdale. Corbinite didn't do too much in this game, and so he didn't just, Zach, or Flareon did pick up the kill as well. But Grimmsnarl coming in the clutch. With the two kills that we needed to win this game. So that is going to be it for this video, guys. My voice is probably sounding raspy and rusty. So 
I'm going to go ahead and get out of this video. If you guys can, hit that like button. Subscribe to join the Phil Shocker crew today. With all being said, I've been Phil Shocker, the 96 Hedgehog. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.